This week on RSBNB Update, 2024 begins with RuneScape's Birthday Bonanza with buffs for skillers and PVMers alike. Everyone has their favorites, and we highlight which ones might be the most powerful choices. We also discuss fancy hats, Vorkath scales, and what we've been up to. This is RSBNB Update, episode 968, recorded Thursday, January 11th, 2024. The Birthday Bonanza. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of RSBNB Update, the first of 2024. Your co-hosts are back, Tannis. Welcome welcome back for for the new year. Thank you, Shane. I'm ready to, uh, you know, kick some ass and analyze some updates and... uh... We got an well, easy one this week. We're easing into it this week. Yeah, yeah. Easing into it this week. Also joining us on this episode is Parnassius, resident Australian. Or no, no, sorry. Second favorite Australian of some folks at, exactly. on the Grammar Podcast. Yes. The, the, the second favorite Aussie to, uh, to, to tennis apparently gets number one spot. And I'm All back right. to assault your ears. <laughs> but of course, uh, we're we're glad to be back. Uh, this is we were just remarking in pre-show that it's been about a month since we actually recorded a regular RSBNB update because we had two specials rounding out the year. Of course, the year in review and then the clip show, and then we took a week off. So hopefully, everybody's all caught up on that. Um, but nonetheless, uh, if, if you're if you're just uh, coming in for the first time, we've been doing this podcast now for eight hundred and sixty-eight episodes and you know we've been a lo- around a long time almost as long as runescape has but uh that would not be possible of course without our wonderful community and our experienced here patreon supporters who i get to thank for the first time this year and that's amos reed andrew c drama free jason s jesse w keski ricky a ripeth runestar and the naked captain big huge thank you goes out to all those guys for making our rsbnb update possible in the truest form that we can say that. I, I, I say that, but I really mean it when I say these guys' names. Of course, we have a whole suite of other Patreon supporters as well who help out with our community, and of course, more on the Patreon offerings a little bit later in the show. But of course, uh, with that, you can also find full show notes at update.show. We have a community Discord at update.show slash Discord, and you can find us in-game at Friends Chat. Bits bites. My name is Shane One Two Zero Eight Eight. Tannis can be found at Tannis Seventy Nine, and uh, Tannis. We seem to have a we seem to have a history here of bringing on people who who don't have numbers in their name. Hence, Pronasius. <laughs> but he has some really cool alts. Yes, like <laughs> Pronasium and 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 the Iron Man, which I'll let him say what his name is. That's all in us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love seeing that one walking around the 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 French chat, and yeah, chat and whatnot. Thinking with everything going on at the moment, it's probably going to get membership again soon and uh, start leveling everything up again. Yeah, and, and you know it's the same thing I saw in December with the skill pier, so I, I did that too. And you know we're in for another one of these. Um, uh, let's just say in-game holiday events this time because it is the RuneScape anniversary event going on in game right now from January 8th to the 21st, the birthday bonanza, as they're calling it, a birthday bonanza full of buffs. And if you unlock eight buffs over the span of the 8th to the 21st, you will get the fancy hat to, of course, go with your fancy boots. And it it has the exact same color scheme as that hat. And, you know, I, I think this is just a perfect way to kind of just celebrate with this. It's not something that is over the top. Let's just say it's a, it's of course a nice top hat, but it's not over the top, and it, it's just a it's just a nice little event to kind of you know wet the whistle of maybe some things that are on the way uh, this year. So, what what was your guys what was your guys first reaction upon seeing um, the hat and of course the the way they're going with these buffs? Yeah. Uh... The... Go, go ahead, go. Francis. Like yeah, no, I was just gonna say. I mean that the hat. I mean it's fine um the buffs are uh, so far i mean they, they seem to be aimed more at sort of mid-tier players rather than end game players so oh, far. okay seen. that's an interesting perspective uh, 
there's been nothing really that has sort of interested me. Uh, obviously, I'm clicking on one every day just to unlock it because yeah. I just have that need to unlock everything that's in game. Uh, but you know, it's sort of like a. It, 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 to me, it's a poor man's version of what we were being offered at uh, in Heroes Pass. These buffs. Mm, Tannis. Well, um, I, I don't. I I could. I feel one way or another about the hat. Right. Um, so much headwear. <laughs> you know, like a, it's like whatever. Um, but. I what is interesting is the buffs. Um, there's some really cool ones. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of looking. F- yeah. Like I, I I think there's some really interesting buffs. Um, you know whether they're the poor man's version or dare I say the free version, I'm cool with it because there there's some there's some really cool ones. You know the yeah. the free. Well. There would have been even more cool. Well, actually, there there is. The it, it took me a minute to figure out how they worked. That you know, it was two hours, pick, and and you could pick one of three. Yeah. But they didn't accumulate. Right. Right. Like it was because I saw some really fun ones. I thought that would be cool for um like to kind of mix and match them. Well, I was thinking like, oh, I could I'll mess around with some PVM. Oh, there's some pretty good Slayer ones in here. All the mm. while, you know, there's there's a few, you know, skilling. But then I saw that damn cannonball one. I'm like, <laughs> you ruined it. You had to ruin it. <laughs> oh man. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, I'm not saying that they're all bad. I mean, there there are there are some good ones, but the ones we've been, <laughs> we've had up so far, there's been nothing really there. But that uh, that cannon one was. Um, yeah, that's that was an interesting one. I had a good laugh on that one. <laughs> of course, you're referring to uh, infinite ammunition, where cannons don't require consume cannonballs. Yes. Um, yeah. So we start off with devout, efficient gatherer, and infinite ammunition. Uh, devout meant that your prayer points won't drain. Efficient gatherer, twenty percent chance to receive an additional item when gathering. Um, and the next day on the ninth, we got Runic Focus, which meant that combat spells, teleports, and necromancy incantations wouldn't require runes, but XP was reduced by 90%. Rituals, which gave a 50% output buff to necromancy uh, rituals on the ninth as well. I actually went for that one and got 118 necromancy off that. Nice. Uh, there's Acrobatic uh, that uh, reduces the cooldown of uh, Escape, Surge, and Dive. Um, from 20.4 to 4.8 seconds on the 9th. Then on the 10th, we had um, um, Kleptomaniac, e- which means that pickpocketing would never fail, Eagle's Apprentice, uh, which was a 200% artisan's uh, workshop uh, respect, and the other one on the 10th was, if I could type, was Energetic, which meant which was basically... Um, a version of Fury of the Small that would not stack with the other one, with act with actual Fury of the Small. So, and I I wanted to talk about Kleptomaniac in particular as we go through these because you mentioned the 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 distinction between mid and high tier. Well, Kleptomaniac I think is definitely that mid to high tier, um, because on the skill pier I went from level sixty eight to seventy five thieving in that two hours with that. Mm. Whereas if you've got yeah you know, you've got the outfit and you're doing elves you never you know it's basically an right. elf fail anyway and, so yeah and if you really wanted to juice the money on this you go to those those Croxacel knights at I think it's yeah level that's what I yeah and that, and that would have been you know the no brainer yeah, for this I've one or didn't actually even think of those <laughs> or or the dwarf traders just like we used to do it back in the day mm-hmm. that's but you what, know how, you wouldn't have to do all the monkeying around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you wouldn't needed that monkey pet, and they do. They do come back up. Uh, some of them do come up back up late later on uh, in in the cycle again, because they are able to do that. And the interesting thing, kleptomaniac was only up once. And so, just for just for Tannis's uh, thing, the infant ammunition was only on day one, so it was really only a half a day oh, anyway okay. you got for that one. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was basically. I mean, I 
because of being in Australia, I always miss that first day because it come resets basically when I go to bed. Sorry, well, they, they put it up about when I go to bed and resets at like 10 a.m. the next morning for me. So I always miss those first ones. Yeah. Yeah, and, and see, that's the thing with these is that Kleptomaniac, I feel, is a very powerful one. You know, 200% yeah. uh, extra respect in the Artisan's Workshop. You know, we can take it or it's leave powerful. it, right? But Well, for people going for I mean, I, again, I've unlocked everything, so it doesn't matter to me. But... You know, double double uh, respect is pretty good because it's you know it's one percent every ten thousand XP. So you're basically half. No, it's plus two hundred percent. So plus oh. one hundred would be double. Yeah. Oh, so oh wow, so you're getting three times. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. So yeah, yeah, that's that is a very powerful one for those. Yeah, trying to unlock all those uh, all those achievements down there. Yeah. Then on the eleventh, we had a uh, high metabolism. Plus 100% healing from food and potions. And this was my Raziel day because that is a boss that is, is very dependent on, you know, how much food you can have and how much you're going to eat because it deals out so much damage towards you. And I mentioned to you in chat last night, Pernasius, the horseshoe has not made its appearance yet in 2024. <laughs> People can be pleased about that. Oh. No, we're we're always rooting for you. Oh, it's it's always better when it's someone you know who uh, who you know gets something good rather than some random YouTuber who's already worth you know forty five billion. Oh, and on that, but, um, no 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 black party hat this year for me. Oh wow, that that is surprising. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> the most surprising thing we'll probably hear in twenty four. Um, Although I think that's coming back each year. So yeah, it will. You'll, you'll get it this year. <laughs> um, meticulous, 100% extra archaeology precision and plus 50% chance of finding materials while excavating. If I if I had the ability to PVM and get archaeology materials at the same time on the skill pier, this is what I would have went with there. Just, you know, farm <laughs> the materials I would have needed, you know, for the next 20-odd levels or so. Then we moved it's only to, two hours, so you could have yeah. gone from one and then did two hours on the next one. I, so. I, I didn't have time that day. Um, Fair enough. But then we go to another one that only appeared once, and that's Lunar Prodigy, plus 300% prodigy points at the Livid Farm for people who haven't, hadn't done that. Boo. I know. <laughs> I know. I, uh, I, I, I still, I still uh, you know, hold a claim to fame that I did... Uh, I unlocked everything at Lunar Farm before they halved the points, so it was one million points. <laughs> no doubles, no extras or anything. I did the whole lot on my own. Then they then they go and they halved it to five hundred thousand. Give me five hundred thousand points back, and it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> what good are they? There's nothing there to unlock. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Then on the twelfth, we have uh, metalwork mastery. Which means stamina doesn't decrease while mining and heat doesn't decrease while smithing. This is available on the twelfth and the nineteenth. So bookmark that one, everyone. Yep. That is a good one, that one. But you're gonna have to pick between that and three times the charm, where summoning charms will be uh tripled at all enemies except for the Arch Glacier, and killer contracts which is 100% extra Slayer points and Reaper points, free Slayer VIP choices, and free Soul Reaper assignment choices. So the 12th is a, another very powerful one in that you're forced to to pick between, you know, three that, that you're definitely going to want. I'm going to be going for Killer Contracts for the for the Reaper points. Yeah, this is the first one that sort mm -hmm. of pops up that's interesting for me and the same, the Killer Contracts for me. Yeah, it's probably yeah, Slayer I'm for you though instead. Gearing up for it. <laughs> yeah, they, I'm gearing for it. Yeah, uh, and then the thirteenth, another another this big is one. The big one. Yeah, death, <laughs> death's favor. Deaths are safe, and upon death, you respawn in a safe area. And this one also comes back on the twentieth. Also on the thirteenth and the twentieth, we have Trailblazer, which gives you which sucks. Why does That's what they're doing on the same same day as Death's ah, Favor. Right. Both times, too. It's, it comes up twice, and both are against bloody Death's Favor. Yeah, and it's 100% uh, <laughs> treasure trail points from completing treasure trails for people who still need their Globetrotter. So, yeah, very very hard hard choices there for, for those ones. 
Um, Finally, they found a way to put in meaningful choice. There's also Tyler windfall. Uh, you will periodically gain that rare one. items while training non-combat skills. And and the question Dude. is, what is a rare item, right? Like I bet it. I bet it's like the stuff you get from the Saren spirit. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it'll be just the Saren or the uh, the, the the ring ring. Oh, okay. Uh, the, yeah, the brooch of the gods thing. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but but still shit. interesting. Yeah. Then we got, you, you know, we're just ramping up here as we go through this because the 14th has another series of powerful choices here. Hazelmere's Blessing, 5% chance per dropped item to double enemy drops, 14th and 21st. Boon of the Artisan, 20% chance to save resources when training, construction, crafting, fletching, or fire making. 20% chance to double items produced when training, cooking, herb lord, rune crafting, and 20% chance to gain double progress while smithing. Then we have passive regeneration, which is probably the, the one that you will least likely choose here, which is the life points, prayer points, and summoning points will regenerate by 10% every six seconds outside of combat. And that is one that they, it's a repeat from one that they did during December. Yeah. So that's Hazelmere's blessing definitely there for me, probably, I think. Yeah, I'm tossing mm -hmm. between Boon of the Artisan because I am going 200 mil all or Hazelmere's Blessing. Then on the 15th, we have Ashes to Ashes. All enemies drop noted Ashes on death. I don't know what kind that will be, but that'll be interesting to see, probably just based on tier. We also have Oracle, which is 100% divine energy when harvesting from a divination spring and 100% energy when converting memories to energy. I don't know. Do we need that? I, I mean, for people we who are... need it? No. <laughs> that Do is probably the one... No. That's it. That is probably the one that I am going to use on that day, though. It also because... comes up with runic focus again on that day, which is the free rune, or free spells again. Yeah. So. But again, that one, because uh, you, I like to make all my own charges and everything. Yeah, so, so I mean, if you do no, that, you'll... perfect day to stock up, right? Exactly. So that's basically what I'll be doing for a couple of hours on the 15th. Yeah, on the 16th we have a uh, tree shaker, 200% chance to find a bird's nest while woodcutting, which I guess might be a day to go farm him candle pieces if that kind of lines up with, with that. But you also have to choose between that, devout, and ritualistic, uh, which is, of course, the no prayer point drain and the necromancy ritual output. Um, and then on the 17th, we have Soul Catcher, 200% chance, plus 200% chance to catch Slayer monsters using Ushab T. That well one as... I'm really excited about. I, I, I mean, come on, we can finish. We can, if you can finish. You only got two hours, rep. though. So what can you kill in two hours, right? A lot of stuff if you have a 200% better chance. I mean, if you're trying to just finish your your um codex yeah your codex yeah yeah which and, is what i'm talking about and this is up against high metabolism which is the f um food and healing one and meticulous which is the archaeology one um so safe to say for me on that one it'll be again the food one uh because i have no interest in doing slayer with that yeah, and I've already uh, completed the Codex, so again, I'm probably with you there on the food one. I didn't yeah. actually think about that for Raziel, so that might be the day I attempt him. Yeah. Um, then on the 18th, we have Acrobatic again, as well as Windfall and Thrill Seeker. Your Slayer counter does not decrease. So if you just wanted to go farm Slayer creatures somewhere for two hours, the 18th is the day to do it. Go force that gemstone dragon dragon task that you were so passionate about. I was gonna about. say you gotta you gotta get the right task. <laughs> but yeah. You couldn't force it, but you could get you could get a dragon task even from Lanakea. Yeah, that would work. That would work. Uh, um and you know, speaking of which we did uh, recently put out our monthly bit on uh on so the Slayer tasks, hot or not, which I I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like we recorded that so long ago. How do how do you guys feel about that at, at this point? Oh, I was happy. I was happy yeah, with it. Love it. Yeah, and you know, as, as Shane put in the uh, in, in the um, Discord chat, if you've got any hate on it, bring it on. 
bring it to me. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll 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 do a wider wider plug on that in just a bit. But that might be a you know the first monthly bit of twenty twenty four that people might be interested in having a listen to to see if you you know agree with us, hate us about about our Slayer. About our Slayer preferences. And everyone's entitled to their own opinion. There's, you know, you can agree with me and be correct or just be totally wrong and disagree with me, you know? Yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's Slayer. <laughs> you could just ultimately choose to just go lamp the thing instead like like I do, but... Wow. Heretic. Heretic. <laughs> All right, so... But like fun. Oh, so, you know. So the way this works, I feel like we should have mentioned this at the top, maybe, but... If the day ticks over while your buff is still active, you'll be able to keep using it for its remaining duration as long as you don't log out. So activate it before reset and don't log out. If you log out, it's done. You, you got to move on to the next one. So let's get to the nitty gritty of this and just say... These were buffs that were destined for for a hero pass or something like that at some point. I think we all agree on that, probably. Yeah, well, even the design of it. I mean, the uh, the interface is exactly what they had on on hero pass. Yeah, and it goes um, right into what the players suggested that hey, you know, make these buffs available to everybody. And here we are. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to be at a more limited time. Um, and it's it's. I also think it's another interesting way of kind of just, you know, dipping their toes into the into the water to see how the engagement goes on something like this, where it's a question of, you know, if you have a hot fire buff for only two hours a day, is that going to, you know, encourage you to log in? Because we talk time and time again, like, what's an average play session, right? I know many people who stay logged in for hours and hours, but I also know lots of people for whom a 15 to an 15 minute to an hour long play session is is average in the way it goes. So, yep. and again, I feel 2 something... hours is, you know, on the on the other end of that, so it's like, okay, you're going to have more than you need if you're, you know, just severely average as I like to call it. Yeah. But again, I mean, and and I go back to when we talk about Hero Pass, the, their main problem was they locked it behind Premier Club and not just being a member. Um, that's the mistake they made, and uh, you know that that's why I think they got so much, uh, you know, negative negative feedback on it all. But you know, this is this is a good way to pump it out there and see how people feel. Uh, you know, two hours, yeah, definitely long enough. I, I'd like, I would have liked to have seen maybe if we could break it into two one-hour sessions. Yeah, uh, you know, you get two hours of buffs, and you can, you know, maybe do an hour of one and an hour of another, or you know, but but you know, it's it's the first time we're we're uh, we're doing it, so I think, yeah, you know, I, I think they're doing it well just to test the waters, so to speak. Yeah, and another interesting thing on this is that um, you know, if you were to combine buffs like this over a period of time, you get something that looks remarkably similar to the relic system. In old school's uh, most recent leagues, Trailblazer Reloaded, to the point where, you know, things just become insanely overpowered, but that's okay because it was a limited game mode. So, you know, this shows that the that the tech is there where it's possible to, you know, put these buffs in, and we know it's possible to, to boof, boof, buff. Boof it. <laughs> that's a whole other thing, Shane. <laughs> I didn't know you was into that. <laughs> no, it's oh, possible to buff oh, XP damn. rates. So what I, basically <laughs> what I'm trying to do is that obviously we know that these sort of buffs were going to be through a, a battle pass system, but that's not going to happen at this point, so they're giving them to us in, a, in another way. But yeah. I also think that this is a fun little experiment to see how these sorts of things interact with RuneScape 3, for the point in time in the future, which, you know, they do a, a time-limited game mode similar to Leagues. Because I know that's something we talked about on the Christmas break, is that, you know, if they were to bring something like Trailblazer over to RS3, we would all jump on it. And most of the community would Definitely. jump on it. And oh, you're yeah. going to need, you know, a system to do buffs like that, both in terms of things that buff the game world. And you're also going to need a way to, you know, boost XP modifiers, which we got. So it's just a it's just a question of you know at this point implementing the different character tech and we're off to the races for this. 
So in addition to where the buffs came from, I feel like this is also an interesting aspect of this that is kind of behind the curtain, so to speak. And obviously we don't know that anything like that is going to happen this year, but it just shows that um, this sort of experimenting with pushing the limits in RS3 is, is something that, that Jagus is already up to. So I like it for the first update yep. of the year. Yeah. Um, I have I have nothing to complain about with this, and it's going to be forcing me into the game to do things that uh, I probably wouldn't have done wouldn't have done previously if if I had the option of doing it. So I'm I'm definitely jumping on on the PVM focused ones. Let's just say, like mm. the Raziel ones, like the like the free death one, and I already know what the two free death weekends are going to be for. But I'll I'll talk <laughs> about that later. <laughs> what are you chuckling for? Uh, because that's probably when we're going to see the little message. Oh, I got it. So, uh, something I something dropped. I completed or... the Raziel log. Uh-huh. That'll, that'll be, be, that, that'll like be that. That'll be on the food one, but the two free death ones, the first free death couple hours is going to be um for the refining of hard mode care pack, which I did get down over Christmas break, and the second one will probably be Raksha. Raksha, yeah, that's a bitch. That okay. one, yeah, it is. So, all right. Um, I mentioned it briefly. I mentioned it briefly, but uh, there's that monthly bit about um, about Slayer tasks and the hot or not list. Patreon.com/slash/rsbnb. And I'm going to thank our Patreon supporters for the first uh, for the first episode of of the year because, you know, without you guys, we wouldn't have had the year that we did last year, and you guys. Uh, quite honestly, made it all worth it to us. So this week, I'd like to thank Alaska, Alvaro L., Amos Reed, Anatoly D., Andrew C., Arvizel, Chulbura, Dominic R., Drama Free, Duramax, Free Milk, G. Hammy, Guy Lafleur, Jacob G., Jade Gizmo, Jason S., Jeebus, Jesse W., Jim M., Keski, Killer Snowball, Lemon Lodge, Ling01, Luminos, Nate the Great, Pernasius, Ren Hong, Ricky A., Ripeth, Runestar, Samuel F.L., Scott D.S., Shirt Pants, Teal Lee, The Naked Captain, The Dabbing Goat, Tim, Tom V., Ukulele Steve, Zant, and Zazakon. And of course, if you're wondering where these names are all coming from, it's from Patreon at patreon.com slash rsbnb. Joining up for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to a back catalog of monthly bits, which are our bonus show that we do each and every month. We do them on a single topic, and last month's topic was the Hot or Not Slayer list, which I'm going to let you guys kind of just sell right now because you guys are the Slayer fanatics here. Yeah, yeah check it out. I mean, I I think we ran through a very large list of um, Slayer creatures, and it was a lot of fun. It was, and I mean... It... It was one put together by uh, Tannis himself, so that was you know he chose the 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 Slayer Masters. We didn't do every Slayer Master, obviously, but uh, I think the ones that Tannis chose were were good ones. And you know their their tasks are the tasks that um, you know most people would do. And we even yeah you know, even come up with a few things that oh yeah that's right you can do those in different places and such so it was sort of it was a bit of an eye opener even for you know us who are regular slayers so it was well worth to listen to i reckon yeah and and did we honest. convince you shane that it is at least a skill no no and oh, I, i'm not gonna sucks. lie i'm not gonna lie the first thing i thought of after doing that episode the next day was that i really want to do the do the episode still where i tear slayer apart but that's a topic for another day um what that episode did do is it did is it did give me the underpinnings of knowing what a good block and prefer list looks like so i will say that if you're you know wanting to hear a bit of discussion about the various slayer masters that you might be using and which ones are good which ones are bad from that master what you what you can do is you can use that to build a good block and prefer list so so you can you can walk into it with that in mind but there's other ones too up there there's our tier list there's our discussion on holiday events or discussion on uh the skill and guilds and so on and so forth but that's all available for only a dollar a month one dollar a month good value good value uh we also have a vip tier for three dollars a month where you get a vip rank on the discord and a special chat channel and all that you also get high quality stereo versions of the show 
And we also do have the Insider tier, which is perfect to subscribe to in January because you get a shout-out on the podcast each and every week. Plus, you also get early access to the clips that build the clip show, which is which is now another 11 months away, believe it or not. So it's back to the beginning for that, and I already have one uh, from pre-show this week that um, was bordering on the realm of acceptability, let's say. Right, Pranasius? <laughs> very, very on the borderline. <laughs> But, uh, of course, also the experience uh, tier, which is presently sold out. But a big, huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for allowing us. To just to here. everyone out there, it's I don't. It's a lot of stuff I say is very tongue in cheek. It's uh, oh, don't worry, know. I'll I'll, st- I'll still make you look good with this. This was the this was the, this was the one about the bed, not the other stuff. Oh, good. This is yes, okay. Yeah, but I missed the thing. I, I missed the one about the snake because I wasn't recording that yet. Okay, well, yes, <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to put the whole lot in. <laughs> uh, anyways, Patreon dot com slash RSPMB. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, All right, everybody. Vorkath changes this week. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, like like I look at this boss, and I talk to bears again over the break. Um, I talk to even Avernic who has just been working through normal mode to get the 100 kills for, you know, the the Nexus and whatnot. And the sense is, is that Vorkath lives up to what we said, that, it, you know, it's some it, it was initially designed for normal mode, but it's not like a bad boss encounter by any stretch of the imagination. It's just different. Um, but what we have here this week is that there's a new item that's being added to hard mode. It's a hard mode only crafting material, that will directly enhance Draculic army f- armor from tier 90 to tier 92 without the need to go through the whole ancient scale path. And what it's called um, is Vorkath scale, and you just use that and it upgrades one piece of the armor uh, to level 92. And you're able to get that uh, from hard mode. And the thing that uh, I think raised everybody's eyebrows with this is that if you've already completed the log, and this is from the news post, they say that you'll be able um, to retain the title, but the scale will not be marked as unlocked on the log, so you'll only want to get a hold of one when you can. So, just a, just a, just a note of, about that in terms of the but, I log. mean, I might be wrong, but the drop rate looked reasonable with that yeah yeah i don't agree right well okay let's get into that so we got the drop table numbers for this one here um yeah i mean if ahead. i could just say I, I love the idea 10 out of 10 by adding the vorkath scale but yeah i mean it keeps it the within the ecosystem log, that's it. You've added something to it. It's something you've got to unlock. I don't understand this. Oh, I'm going to lose my title, so I have to... Have... No, people... I mean, most people don't care. They'll go back and get it. So, I just... I just... I hate this handhold. Well, no, it says you will retain the title here. That's what I mean. I mean, you Oh, so you think it should title. be... You think it should be yoinked yeah. away. Yep, take it away, and then you've got to go back and get the scale. I mean, you know, it's it's part of the drop table. You don't have it, you you lose your title. I mean, it's the same as a new quest comes out. I don't keep my quest cape. I've got to go and unlock the new yeah, quest. Yeah, that's fair. You know, it's just, I just don't understand this and, hand-holding and things on that type of stuff. Yeah. So it's uh, so he, so let's go through the, and, and we'll see, you know, where this lands. So in normal mode, a spike is 1 in 50. So that explains why people weren't seeing spikes in normal mode. The Lord of Bones Codex is 1 in 300. The Vorkath Pet is 1 in 2,000. And the Vorkath Death Guard and Lantern Cosmetic Tokens from the event are 1 in 5,000. That's good. Now, moving over to hard mode, spikes get up to 1 in 15. The Lord of Bones Codex and the Vorkath Scale are now 1 in 25, and the note here on this is that the Vorkath Scale is only available in hard mode and shares a drop chance with the Lord of Bones Incantation Codex, and once that chance is hit, it's a 50-50 shot of whether you get the Codex or the Scale. So that's how they did that. Mm-hmm. I Which think I would have preferred ability to figure right. out but it seemed reasonable i would have preferred to you know put them in both to, to each you know give them their own uh slot on the drop table that's how i would have done it instead overall though it, it kind of feels like 
well, at least with PVM, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> like, you know, this was the really the only complaint about Vorkaf that I mean that I heard or that even we picked up on. Um, and we're what a month a month later. Well, no. see, that's the complicated thing. I think it was thing. a test. Okay, go for it. And then I'll say why it's a bit more complicated than that. Yeah, no, I just thought it was a test. We'll see how this boss is going, and you know, we'll we'll work on the hard mode once we see you know the the reception of this boss. Yeah, a lot of people want it and want to do it, so now we're going to add that in and and do that type of thing. And yeah, I, I love what they've done. I mean. There should be better drop rates and you know something extra in a, in a hard mode fight. I don't often do hard mode. I generally just do normal mode. But for those people who want that extra challenge, there should be an extra reward for them. And you know, kudos. To right, them. and that's and that's what got it right. And that's what kind of made it feel like hard mode was kind of just tacked on top there. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And the and but then you go back in time to you know the first couple of weeks after launch and you had issues where you know certain attacks were invisible it wasn't necessarily as easy as it should have been to time reactions to some of the attacks and that combined with this hard mode discussion of what we're seeing here is really what led Vorkath to feel kind of unfinished i think and we didn't, you know, see much of those in the in 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 the first week when we talked about it because um, it wasn't bears didn't have the boss to a point, you know, where he was, you know, effectively cycling it in hard mode. It was basically, you know, hey, this is our first, you know, first experience in three four days in. This is how we're feeling about it. We haven't, you know, had a chance to, you know, work out all the all the kinks in the in the way it works. So when you combine all those things after hundreds of kills and which the community on mass is able to do after a few hours because you add all those up, you're going to start seeing all the various bugs that can uh, take place and whatnot. You start to kind of get a better sense that, okay, that's, that's why this thing really didn't feel as polished as it could be. And the, and the question was, is that, you know, with the way the loot was set up initially, how there wasn't necessarily giving enough in terms of, in, enough loot on on the drop tables in terms of the rolls that's you sum all those things together and that's how you get that unfinished unfinished feeling with it mm. and i feel like most of those have subsided right now and i and and see that's the thing we asked when this boss came out you know was there you know no real you know combat council work done on this or were these just kind of things that were overlooked for one reason um or, or was another? it rushed to get it out in time yeah, close, exactly. So they just threw it out, and then we'll worry about the hard mode afterwards. Right, and that really makes me want to go back to the boss on normal mode and try hard mode. So, take that for what it's worth. Okay. All right. Uh, we do have a few patch notes this week. Um, in addition to everything else. Uh, I should I should also mention that the drop weight, the drop rates are doubled um, for the claw, the which is the pet, and the and the cosmetics in hard mode, just as everything else is. So it didn't didn't get to mentioning that, but mention that now. On the on the Christmas side of it, the peppermint outfit and the combined hat and scarf can no longer be keepsake, but they will instead be unlocked automatically in the wardrobe as soon as the requirements are met, and any previously keepsaked items have been cleared and the keys have been refunded. And I know a few people ran into this this week where they were running around trying to look at this and saying, you know, why can't I keepsake my my hat or my scarf? Well, it appears in the appearances window just like the um, just like the permanent comp cape overrides do. Much better idea. Yeah, and, and like we also said, Vorkath changes with this to uh here in in the patch notes continuing on what was there um added the scale as the requirement to complete the boss collection log if not already completed fixed an issue where players could join another player's instance once the boss was already defeated players can oh. now <laughs> that one <laughs> yeah that'd be fun hey eh? um <laughs> players can now set fastest kill times when fighting vorkath and zammer eagle in hard mode 
fixed an issue that would cause the phase markers on Vorkath's HP in the Battle of Four and Three fight to display the wrong information. Again, another big one. Fixed an issue that would cause the phase indicators in the Zamorak fight to display at incorrect HP and be stacked in one location. And, you know, I question why that's in here with the Vorkath stuff, but I guess it's just using those same kind of phase indicators. Players now have to be present when standing or when starting the Zammer Eagle and Vorkath fight via the gate to be able to claim loop. Kill count achievements will now be displayed correctly and fix the issue that caused clues to drop to the ground when gaining a Vorkath shard with the Charles clue carrier equipped. In general patch okay. notes this week, uh, players can no longer use a power burst of acceleration to skip certain boss mechanics. This was at AMD. These are things I never knew about, which were right. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it's two very, very niche locations. It, it's one mechanic at AOD and one mechanic at, at Yakamaru. So two, two bosses I'd never do anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. And, you know, at the Yakamaru one in particular, it's the sand phase, and the way you're supposed to get out of that is your other, you know, teammates are supposed to pull you up out of the sand, whereas previously with this, you could just sip the power burst of acceleration, and you could um, get out <laughs> of it that way. The Sears Headband 4 cosmetic override should now unlock as expected, and if the cosmetic override remains unavailable after the completion of the Sears Village Elite task sets, talk to the Seer Taskmaster about buying the spare rewards. It's not necessary to buy any, though. And then um, Patch Bombing at Hetz Oasis will now uh, give six Cactus Spines instead of three if you have the Desert uh, Hard Task complete. And there's the patch notes for the week. There's also a bunch of engine changes this week, too, but it's not immediately clear. Um, what they were fixing. There was an issue with 4K screens on Windows 8 and maybe some older Windows 10 and 11 devices. Improved loading performance on iOS devices that are A10X based, which is really old at this point. So not too much to write home about there in the engine changes. But that's pretty much the RuneScape updates for the week. The first, uh, the first update of 2024. All there right. You go. Uh, are we ready for some achievements here? Achievement. <laughs> I think there there are a few. Yeah, there are. And, you know, there's achievements going back to um, December 16th because we haven't read them out. And Tannis was like, are we going to read all these out? Yes, of course we are. It's tradition at this That's point. That's it. So you Pernas guys got it. You, you, des you deserve the call. Yeah, Pernasius, start uh, us off. We will. So on January 10th, we have Omega with 200 mil smithing XP and XOX Scotty XOX with 120 thieving XP. On January 9th, we have Darkest Night with 120 Dungeoneering, Lamp PI with 99 Constitution, and again, XOX Scotty XOX with 120 Magic. Moving on to January 8th, Lord Zorik got 99 Defense. Uh, January 7th uh, has Bro with 99 Magic, Mosanatha with 99 Dungeoneering, uh, no one for the 6th, so moving on to January 5th, we've got Lord Zorik again, 99 Smithing, MedgeQuest with 99 Cooking, uh, Queen Rap Rap RuPaul, 99 Necromancy, and again, XOX Scotty XOX with 120 Fletching. January 4th sees Forex with 99 Necromancy. Our very own Trekkie, uh, who's in the game, is J1J2J3 with 99 Necromancy. Uh, Sparty Pants has 120 Hunter. On to January 3rd, J, J. Amandi 52, 200 Magic. Lord Dusty, 200 Constitution. And Nuni 01 with 99 Dungeoneering. Then on January 2nd, Sparty Pants with 120 Thieving. Nicely done. Continuing on, Dr. Rowe with 99 ranged on the 1st. We have Lampy with 99 Farming. Rune Dragon with 120 farming, Turd Sniffer Zero with 99 invention. Then on the 31st, we had Burizi with 99 defense, 99 magic, 99 strength, and 99 attack. Lord Zorik got 99 strength, 
Pentixide got 99 Dungeoneering. Those are all on the 31st. Then on the 30th, we have Legion 1943 with 120 Fishing. Lord Zorik again with 99 Attack. Robbie with 120 Necromancy. Turd Sniffer Zero with 99 Magic. Hephaestio 5 with 99 Archaeology. Sparty Pants got 120 Prayer on the 29th. Turd Sniffer Zero got 99 Ranged on the 29th. Lord Zurich got 99 Slayer. Skips got 120 Necromancy on the 27th. Turd Sniffer Zero got 99 Constitution. Barizi got 99 Ranged and 99 Dungeoneering on December 26th. A bit of a dangerous pair there. Forks got 99 Archaeology on the 26th. And Omega got 200 million thieving on the 26th. Then we have Mej Quest with 99 ranged on December 25th. All right. And then on the 23rd, we have Barizi with 99 necromancy, Lampy with 99 thieving, um, and 99 prayer, Mage Quest with 99 defense. And then on the 22nd, we have Forex with 99 Dungeoneering. Uh, totally. 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 Cool. Uh, 120 Farming. Mage Quest with 99 Archaeology on the 21st. Faxer Lav with 99 Mining. 21st, we have Lampy with 99 Agility on the 20th, Remo Reaper with 120 Prayer, uh, Turret Sniffer Zero with 99 Strength, Harry Dock with 120 Farming, then on the 19th, Lampy with 99 Strength, Saver, Saver Lav with 99 Necromancy and Elven Badass with 99 Dungeoneering on the 18th. Then we have Godden with 120 ooh, Agility on the 18th. This product Silly boots, cat. it's fine. <laughs> Silly Cat um, 98 with 120 Archaeology. Um, thought Thian. Thian Pierre near <laughs> science here. Uh, you too can have your name mispronounced by Tannis. Uh, all right, 99 fire making um, on December 17th. We have Pentacide with 99 archaeology. Turd Sniffer Zero with 99 slayer wood cutting and attack. Archaeology, fishing, and construction, all on the 17th. Turt Sniffer was productive. Um, we have Alley the Wise with 99 Necromancy on the 16th. And I Like Slayer with 99 Necromancy. I like you. <laughs> and that's on the 16th. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Our favorite, our favorite naming game. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I've met, I've met him in real life. He's a good person. Nice. All right. And it's good to see Turd Sniffer getting his head out of the toilet and getting all those, <laughs> uh, all those ninety nines. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> um. So before pick of the week, I just want to, of course, mention as well, New Year. New lists, everything, you know, starting fresh. We are, of course, looking for people who might be interested from within our community to appear on the podcast this year. So if you do want to appear on the show at some point this year, all you got to do is head on over to update.show slash help and fill out that form there. We ask you uh, what time zone you're in, what kind of RuneScape player you are if you use any social media and I, you know, quick answer about why you want to be on the show. I feel like you should be able to say that if you, um, if you want to be on the show. And then of course, contact information, RuneScape name, discord, yada, yada, the whole shebang like that. But update.show slash help. If you're interested in appearing on the podcast this year, um, it's one thing we always hear from people that it's, it's great to hear. 
uh, different voices, and we want to um, you know bring bring some more of the community on this year. So if you're interested in uh, getting your perspective out there, you just want to say something on the show at some point, or you, well, not necessarily say something on the show. What I mean is be on the show uh, for an episode. Just visit update.show slash help and fill out the form there. And of course, yes, people watching on the video version will see that we haven't put the Christmas stuff away on the update website. I'm going to do that after we finish here so that um, it's gone by published time tomorrow. But all right. We could find another Aussie and drop me down a third best. <laughs> you could. You could. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, pick of the week. I've been waiting to do this as pick of the week. I think I did this as pick of the week when the app first came out many, many years ago. This is an iOS app for iPad and iOS. And it's a it's a to-do list app, effectively a checklist app. I need to be 100% honest with you up front at the start here that it doesn't have any advanced features like for example, being able to um, integrate into a calendar, for example, or being able to add more information about a specific task, like a notes field, or attach pictures to to do's, like some of the more extravagant ones out there do. So just keep in mind that you're going into this, and you get this app if you're looking for a simple list app. That's the best way of looking at it. And they say this in their in their title. It says remarkably simple lists. And the name of the app is Clear. And it's a gesture-based uh, to-do list app. And the idea behind it is that you swipe right on your device to, in effect, check an item off the list. You swipe to the left all the way to delete it. You can add reminder times uh, to tasks. And then to add new items, you, in effect, we're going again on the gestures. You just pull down from the top and you add you add the item to it. Then you can drag it around to wherever you want on the list. There's other gestures too for adding in between items and whatnot. Um but the most interesting thing about this is that previously this used to be a paid app. But what they've done this time is they've in effect turned it into a game where you can unlock things by or unlock uh themes and app icons and fonts and the whole shebang like that. Customization basically by completing achievements in the app. And there's also of course an app store. Uh, where you can do in-app purchases if you really just want to buy a specific theme. So the person this app is speaking to is just somebody who needs, you know, you you have that, you know, you're you're that person who walks around with a pen and paper in your pocket to just make very simple checklists or to-do lists, right? If you do that, you will use this app. And that's the best way of putting it. It's not like a, a life management app or anything to that effect. And the reason we're talking about it here on Pick of the Week is because it's actually just reemerged um, with the newest version that just came out this week uh, from the ground rewrite from the old version that was out there. And I was very gung ho about this back when this app first came out, I think, in 2011. So, you know, 12 plus years ago at this point in time. So they've done a complete rewrite on it right now. And it feels as native as it ever has. And, you know, it's an iOS app. Um the app draw so much attention back in the day that it actually uh, spurred imitators on Android as well. So that just shows the community behind this app. But it's called Clear. You can find the full link in the show notes at update uh, dot show. But this is something that I've been popping into uh, pretty much for the uh, for the entire week here. Just you know, using it as my kind of uh, I, I guess pen and paper, so to speak. So I'm really pleased to have this back. Awesome. Yeah. And I have just downloaded it because it looks very interesting for the type of Yeah, thing. and you know what they didn't have before? And I know you play RS on your iPad. I don't know if you use it for much else, but um, it, they have a version that actually works natively on the iPad this time, whereas previously it was just, you know, scaled up for the iPad. So there's that. Mm. Um, and there's actually a whole collection of collectibles that came with it too. So that for people who were participating in the beta test, like me, there's actually a collection of themes that were unlocked for that. And if you find a nice person, you might actually be able uh, to uh, to get them to gift those to you. So if anybody's interested in that, you let me know. And it's too bad you did, actually didn't didn't mention that to me, Pranasius, because um, if you would have used my link, I could have got a I could have got a gift for for doing that. 
Well, I've just put it on my phone. I can also put it on my iPad. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the link and see and see what it does. But okay. Um, if and I'd be curious too after you you know dive into it to see uh, how it feels about the onboarding with it because it's not immediately clear how it works, right? So, okay. yeah. so let me know how the onboarding goes and just uh, how it feels because that's the number one thing that really stood out with me back in the day because this was back when I was doing my uh, user interface uh, design classes in school when this first came out. Yeah, I'm dating myself at that point with that. Um, is that this always just caught my eyes being, okay, this is you know an emergent kind of new UI. Maybe there's something that... It can be done with this that that I can learn from on this in terms of the onboarding and they've and they've really done that um with that so uh, I, I just sent you the uh, I just sent you my referral link so you can no you can open yeah. it through there but uh the app is used clear iPad later but yeah it's uh looks really good I mean this is a perfect thing for me because I mean I'm not big on all this type of stuff but just you know when I go shopping just to chuck down a few things I normally just open notes and type it all in there but it'd be Right, and and, like and a lot see, easier to use. yeah, and and see that's the thing. You can use notes for this, especially the modern version of Apple Notes has all the check marks and whatnot to make a list, right? But mm. this is more fun to use, and well, it, this it's is just more interactive off rather than having to, yeah, swiping off and just rather than sort of clicking, clearing that type of, you know, it just looks like it's going to be a, just a bit easier to use. Yeah, exactly. So, um. I always, I always, you know, hold up these sorts of iOS apps as being like the like the hallmark of the sort of things that that we get on iOS that that other uh, developers really don't do on other platforms. Just you know, pushing the limits of UI like that. So, looking forward to it, uh, experimenting with it more, but no, no word yet on if they have a if they have a macOS version uh, for it. But that's the pick of the week. Uh, what have we been up to on RS or otherwise? Tannis, do you want to start with that since Pranasi and I, I've been kind of yakking about this app? Yeah. Um, well, I have not been up to much on RS. I actually took a break. So the last time you heard us was the last time that I was in game. Um, but I started back this week um, just loving just uh, I'm loving the buff um and the and the birthday. We didn't even mention how old RuneScape actually is this year. Yeah, two thousand one, so twenty one. Last year was twenty one. So twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah, twenty two. No, twenty two. Oh. They come of age last 23. year. Twenty three. I don't know. Yeah. Huh. I'm I think losing. the coming of age one was last year, it was twenty first birthday last year, so twenty two I'd say. So yeah, so we can buy a gun. That's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, that I mean, it was nice to step away. I'm I'm just now, like I said, you know, came back playing some buffs, getting in, into it again, and um, and finding myself bouncing around a little bit because these buffs are good. They're good choices, and yeah, so what i've been doing oh and of course you know new year new outfit um you know had to had to put away the christmas gear and, i haven't uh, done that yet uh, <laughs> yeah it's well, funny you say about buying a gun i was actually looking at a, a shirt the other day uh, i thought it was perfect for me if i lived in america uh too old to fight too slow to run but i can still shoot real good <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, no. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. What have you been doing inside of RS then? Uh, for myself, I. No, uh, no, yeah, Tannis yeah. Tad is inside oh, sorry. of RS. Oh, outside, sorry. Oh, I'm just a slayer mostly. No, 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 no. You mentioned a game previously. Oh, 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 dude. I have been trucking, baby. I've been trucking. I've been playing um, ATS, American Truck Simulator. Um, it's as close to driving as I'm going to get. And it's a hell of a great game. Like, I have traveled across the U.S. And I've looked out the window. And I'm telling you, this game doesn't do too bad of a job. In fact, I was like on these interstates. I'm like, dude. 
I bet you anything I'm in Texas right now. And, you know, I can't see the signs necessarily. They're all on there, but I can't really see them. I'm going by the GPS, right? I've got the voice GPS telling me where to go. But all of a sudden, I'm on these roads, and they start going up in the sky. I said, oh, shit, I bet I'm in Texas. How do I know that? Because they made about a 300-foot bridge over about a 3-foot deep creek, because that's how they do it in Texas. Sure enough, there it was. So pretty accurate. Um, <laughs> but now they have added, um, with all the DLC, you can basically have the majority of the western united states from like oregon washington uh down to california and all the way far as east as kansas and, and see so, that was my question is this using like actual um maps and whatnot like flight simulator does or how are how are they exactly doing that I have no idea because I haven't really seen the um, the road, but I mean, once they get once they get their uh, once I get the Indiana DLC, I can tell you. Right, because that would be your. That would <laughs> I be, don't know. Yeah, that would yeah. be your, your neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think so though. I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's obviously not updated and active like flight simulator but i think it's um you know as for interstates and highways i think those are probably can you stop right and pick on. up hitchhikers and not no are there dingy <laughs> bathrooms um probably i mean but you I, I, you can't get out of your truck you know you're just right you're okay driving. fair enough yeah. Yeah. Can you snort snort the Adderall to uh, keep you know drive longer? <laughs> no, well, you do. You can. Um, <laughs> it does have a CB radio, which I which I think is like the public chat or whatever. I'm always listening to my trucking music. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, so. This year is the Robo Ducky. <laughs> That's right. <Come laughs> we got ourselves on. cowboy. <laughs> That's it. Love that movie. <laughs> Also, oh, also, uh, I just want to say before I move on to Parnassius, I've updated the, the link um, in the show notes for Clear to have uh, both the install app link and my referral in there. And if you use this referral link, we both get something. We both get what, something. Um, I don't know, like a, like a theme or something like that. Use or, my link and we'll both get some. Or an app icon. Uh, okay. What have you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Pranasius, what have you been doing? Uh, just generally skilling, uh, slowly going to 200 mil and everything. I'm sort of getting work on everything to get to 190. I want to try and sort of knock out all the 200 mils at once. So just working on uh, the, the basic skills to 190. Being down in uh, the Revenant's Cave, uh, I am up to the warrior so just got the dragon to unlock in the revenant pets and then that's complete nice. uh and also been doing a bit of kel fight queen because i just need the pet to unlock the log bear so this year's sort of going to be i'm going to be working a lot on logs uh sort of boss logs because i've done and slayer logs i'll need to complete those uh just sort of on my quest to true completionist um so yeah, just 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 a bit of everything, really. All right, sounds good. Had a good, good discussion down in World eighty four the other day, actually, which which sounds surprising. Um, head to if you're in World eighty four, head to Fort Forintry. Much better crowd of people. Uh, proper discussions there rather than the ones down at Lumbridge. <laughs> uh, and they they were there's a, just a group that started talking about Yak Track and how they're missing it and all that. And I'm going, oh, you know, just chatting to her, oh, what do you miss? And they said, oh, just having that, you know, those goals and, you know, working towards unlocks. They said, we hated it when it was on, but, you know, now that it, we haven't had it for a while, they're all missing it. So it was actually funny to see the people who were sort of complaining about Yak Track, you know, 12 months ago, now wanting it back and sort of missing it. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting like, how it goes, isn't it? Because I've actually been feeling hmm. the same way. 
Yeah, I, I was actually when I was like, yeah, you know, I do sort of miss miss those goals and just having jumping on because working towards two hundred mil. Oh yeah, I need that skill. I'll jump on and do that. And uh, yeah, it was sort of sort of miss those those little goal setting uh, things that Yak Track gave us. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, and talking of goal setting, uh, leagues ended this week, but I I uh, I pieced out this past uh, weekend from that. Um, reached uh, mithril rank which was good enough for me and you know if you want to hear about the the league stuff that happened over christmas go listen to last week's episode of the old school uh show because uh, this week we're actually doing a quest week over there because old school has a quest um that's happening so i know we have lots of questers in the audience here but if you're interested in hearing an old school quest week go listen to the old school show um that'll be out uh, this sunday update.show slash os i'm not going to go too much into the uh the pvm aspect of old school stuff because i did that on the show there but um i've, I've been doing a lot of pvm over christmas uh opposite of you guys really um i really just threw myself into it um both in terms of the free death period that we had and the old school league stuff um but interestingly enough here on rs3 i mentioned uh that i used the uh food relic to you know do another hour and a bit of raziel before my eyes started um going cross-eyed and i just starting to feel <laughs> eye strain and i wound up dying twice in a half hour which of course shouldn't happen oh, damn. so yeah it was it was late um but so i've been I, I did some of that yesterday but the biggest thing i actually wanted to talk about was that when the free death event was happening i used that as an opportunity to teach myself hard mode care pack Oh, how'd you do, Shane? I am now running between um between five minute and five and a half minute kills in hard oh, mode. Well that's pretty good. Killing it. Yeah. Damn. With uh without any, power, any pieces yet? Without tank armor. No. No. No? No, no that'll pieces. Be next, yet. That'll be next death week. <laughs> yeah, that'll be next death week. And and the goal with that is to get it to a point down where, you know, the time will uh come in. And the interesting thing about this is that um the core of the necromancy combat rotation is the living death rotation where you activate living death. And then that lowers the cooldown of your death skulls immensely to only about 12 seconds. It also amps up the damage from your uh, finger of death and whatnot. So the issue with hard mode care pack that you really need to work around is knowing that you're going to get that time warp ability. And then what you wind up doing is you wind up saving your first living death rotation for phase two so the question is how do you get enough dps in phase one to carry your shell forward and maybe even skip the lightning on that well you got to do some pre-building on that so even that with that was new to me so it's it, it was a fun experience nonetheless and the thing i have heard time and time again from our listeners in general and i heard more of these cases over the christmas break was that necromancy has enabled people to do things that they weren't able to do before in relation mm -hmm. to PVM, and it's lowered um, that barrier, either real or just as it was perceived, and I think necromancy did that oh so well. So look forward to hearing more about that as we progress through the year here on the podcast. But, um, yeah, so next time I get a, a couple of hours of free death, I uh, I want to go do uh, more hard mode care pack, and then after that I think it's off to Raksha because that's another boss that I never really um, was able to nail down in, uh, in, in solo mode, at least. Most of my kills are a duo. So that's what I've been up to. Lots and lots of PVM. Very nice. Ooh. And would you believe who it? Who would have thought two years ago that uh, Shane would be you know, one of our PVM masters? Well, and I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but you know the thing that I missed coming back from playing so much old school in leagues was? I missed the PVM. I missed the PVM. Yeah, really? Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, I mean, there you go. I guess I, I it's grew a bit, on It's a bit something. weird to say, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but then again, like like Pranathi said, who would have thought that you would be our um, resident default by, you know, expert on PVM. I wouldn't call me that. I would not call me that. I've had to look up well, rotations. I don't want to call you that either. I've had so many go. questions. 
<laughs> well, compared to us, here, you are the TV here. <laughs> you're, the, you're, you're now the default PVM guy because Tannis and I just, you know. <laughs> well, I guess maybe that's true. I did help Trekkie get a Zuck cape uh, on Free Death Week. There you go, see? So. <laughs> I've still got to go do that. Yeah, you should. You should. Yeah. It's not too bad with necromancy and whatnot in this day and age, but... I just keep stuffing up with bloody jazz. I flick the wrong one and then panic and move. Right. And so get hit. <laughs> yeah. And, and really the trick for that is just making sure you're in the right safe spot. Then you do one at a time yeah. and just watching for the feet animations. And that'll tell you what bird. Yeah, do. that's it. Always, always stuff up on the, uh, the thing But yeah. And then I panic and oh, you know, and then, you know, the eyes drop off the screen down and go, <laughs> and just go ah, bugger, I'm dead. Screw it. <laughs> right. Well, I'll just say it's good to be back. Um, reminder, if you want full show notes, update.show. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any number of podcast listeners out there. Just visit update.show slash subscribe. And we'll be back next week for another episode of RSB and Update, which is featuring the Candering graphical rework. There was a live stream this week that was showing bits and pieces of that off with Mod Black Witch. So definitely That's right. looking forward to getting our hands on that. But uh, And that get... is still available on Twitch as a, as a replay if you yes. want to see that. It's really it nice. I, I actually watched a little bit of it. I've got to go back and finish. You just reminded me of that. I'm... Uh... I actually had that on earlier this morning. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to. I, I I didn't watch it because I wanted to just you know dive into him to it myself next mm. week. So, but yeah, and I just hear him talking about it and that it's just got me. Oh, I can't wait to see it now. Yep. But uh, mod black, which has to be probably one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, mods now, <laughs> with all the uh, all those graphical updates. <laughs> what about the um, the paintings? And the Maj- team. What yeah. about the paintings? The Majorat paintings. Yes, they're all nice. You saw my Majorat. I showed you my Majorat face last time, didn't I? I did, but do you know what? I, yeah. I don't think we're talking about the same paintings. We're talking about the pinup art ones. Oh, no, I haven't seen those. <laughs> We've got pinup pin up Majorats, have we? Yeah, there are. <laughs> Sweet. Might print out a couple to hang above my computer here on the bare wall. <laughs> they're like Moya? Who are we talking exactly? Uh... Um, yeah, hang on, hang on. Um, so, here, here I'll, I'll just, I'll just post one right now in, uh, in, in the chat for you guys, uh, to see. Um, I know this is kind of going a bit off the, off the track here, but nonetheless, um, yeah, there you go. I just posted it in the chat. Oh, yeah. I've just, yeah, oh, I just typed okay. in, uh, <laughs> I just typed in Marjorie up. <laughs> Up app, and that was the first one that popped. Oh no! There's one. Oh no! So that's the kind of style that they're in. Uh, There's also another funny. one here, yeah. Bill Rock. I like the Sliske one. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. maybe not those ones. Okay, just yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, yeah. So, so I just had to ask, you know, when you mentioned mod, mod black, which paintings, right? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> uh, put those in show notes. Let people check those out. Oh, too. they've seen them before. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Seen them. <laughs> uh, Tannis, anything else before we go? You want to bring us back to Earth here. No, I'm going to let you uh, go out on that limb and and hang. All right. With that being said, we'll be back next week for another episode of RSBB Update. Didn't imagine 2024's first show ending this way, but we'll see you next week, everyone. Take care. See you then. (laughs) See ya. Happy Skype and all. (laughs) 